I guess it started a year ago or something like that. Me and Rachel and her brother and his friend, we were talking about, they study medicine, and we were talking about all this teaching material they have, it's, it's actually pretty bad. And we thought, oh, can we make it better? Can we make, can we enhance the books? Can we make like posters that people can use to look at and like learn in a better way and you have the visual thing? And, and we never really got around to doing it. And then six months ago, I sat down with uh, Rachel's brother and, we had a thought about oh, VR, that could be cool, and he like, kind of lighted on fire and we're like, okay, let's design something for VR. <laughs> and we tried to apply for some money and then we got a little bit of money and then Alpa and Rachel uh, joined the team and then it kind of started from there, I guess. Took off, then we yeah. made the actual product after yes. that. So we wanted to make a poster and ended up with the VR. Yeah. So yeah. it started with the two of you, and um, I can hear Rachel's brother was yes. also involved. Yeah. Yes, because who, yeah. who else is uh, involved? It's your brother and his like friend from study, mm -hmm. and uh, then Alpa, our roommate, who was your friend from your school. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we are five people now. Half medicine, half ICT engineering. Okay, yes. and that is that is actually where the initial interest came from. You know, you looked at the medical material um, because your brother yes. is within exactly. that field, exactly. and he said, "Okay, that yeah. is really." And they not read like these how? giant books all the time, and it just says something like, "And then the heart makes a wrong sound." And they're like, "Okay, what is a wrong sound?" So, how is it actually that you're diagnosed? How, how do I figure that out? Yeah. So we thought, "Okay, we can do we can do better." than that and if there are some drawings in some of those books that they're very crude and you look at that drawing and then you go out in real life and that drawing is nowhere <laughs> that's <laughs> so interesting and, and yeah so they were really motivated to try and can we enhance this in some way a lot of the stuff we found was people doing surgical simulations we talked a little bit about that diagnostics is also a big field. Like they have this big book and then you go out in the hospital and people are lying there and the gap is so big so maybe yeah. we can make that, like meeting another person, mm -hmm. make that into a That's virtual reality thing. Exactly. Some of the limitations, for example, I don't know if it gets too technical, but when you're in VR, you can't, you can't feel skin or stuff like that. So we thought that that is one of the limitations for surgical simulations because you don't get the, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. the resistance <laughs> of... But then with diagnostics, listening with the stethoscope and taking the blood samples, it's it's much more the things you do yeah, yeah. Uh, and how you're doing and, and like in which order you do them. And, yeah. and from so, a medical perspective, it was still making sense to put it in a VR context yes. so that we were, it didn't necessarily do if you had a surgical yes. simulator. Exactly. So we were hoping that some of the limitations of VR wouldn't shine too much through with this focus, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah, that is actually amazing that your brother was on board and could actually really, you know, say, okay, yeah. this really makes sense here and it will actually help us out exactly. there. Exactly. No. Otherwise, we would never no. come up with no. an idea like this. No, we no. would not have the at all uh, knowledge about the field to figure out what no. was relevant. Not at all. And yeah. the good thing, he works, uh, he's interning at different hospitals and then he can take it to a doctor and say, hey, does this make sense? Yeah. Or, and then they can say, no, nope, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. And then we go back and change it. And then it starts to make sense. Uh, yeah. So where are you presenting it in a couple of weeks? Uh, I guess it's at Skype. Right? Yes, exactly. It's a, at the Center for uh, Infections. Yeah, Infectious Diseases. Disease. Infectious yeah. Diseases. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. We're um, practicing this word. Yeah. Yeah, so we were presenting for them. They agreed to just like take a look and give us their thoughts. And so I think that's very nice of them because they're not involved in any way, but they think it's interesting so they want to help out and we think that's super that's cool and we want to be helped so and they're spending a lot of money on training the students that are getting uh, to their uh, speciality in that field and and mm -hmm. so on they can also see an idea and if they could you know free up some time for some of the head medicine blah 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 people yeah uh, and giving the students a chance of actually trying it out technology. yeah exactly so you outsourced graphic and yes. you just kind of searched for it and or did yeah. you know I had, I had, I had a contact from another company I was at where we used 
the, the same company and I thought they were really nice and so we wrote to them and I asked, hey, can you do something for VR? And they're like, yeah, yeah. we really want to do VR. And yeah. yeah, so we bought this, the, the man you see in the program, he's made by them. They were super helpful and yeah. have delivered an awesome job, yes, I think. I think so. All the interior we just bought online, but the, the man is kind of special and he needs special animations and all that, so we needed some professional people to work closely with us to, to do that. And we noticed that when you have the stethoscope on, you can hear his heartbeat. Yes. yes. How did you make that happen? <laughs> um, I guess from a technical point of view, it's kind of a little bit of cheating, uh, yeah. but it always is with like with computer stuff. But inside <laughs> his body, we put like five little boxes, and then and we turned them invisible. But you can still detect if you hit them. So if you hit here, we'll play this hard sound. If you hit here, it's another sound. Hmm. And if you hit below the chest, you'll also hear a little bit of the stomach sound. So we put different sounds in these boxes and. And we for are. that we needed Henrik and Rasmus' help because we yes. had no idea on how, how yeah. is it sounding. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently it yeah. sounds different no matter yeah. where you listen and of course we didn't know that. <laughs> Obviously someone is working yeah, on something I mean, this similar. Is, this is but <laughs> also there's a, uh, a point we didn't know that the, like the whole overview of what sicknesses are here and how do they look and what symptoms do you have, it's actually different throughout the world. So even if someone made something far away, it wouldn't necessarily apply to what we do here. Mm -hmm. And there are different standards for how you work and so I guess this is very focused on at least the Western world and actually Northern Europe to begin with. And we're trying to plan along the way because then you're busy in some periods and you don't spend so much time on it and then other times you can take out a whole weekend and just do yeah. that. And Because so. you have a full-time job yes. next to this, right? Yes. Exactly. Both of you. All of yes. us have, I mean, I only Henrik and Rasmus that are the medicine students, they yeah, don't work. They, but they study and do yeah. And obviously study. medicine. Yeah. I mean, so they it's have a lot to do, and but for them it's super relevant also for their studies. and. For us, it's a super fun project, and we try to make time for it when we can. But we try to plan a chunk of work, and then hunger down, do that, and then come Take back to it later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we try to pull together some, okay, we want to do these, let's say, five things, and then we take out a day or two days in the weekend and like run through all that. And so yeah. it's Agile development <laughs> of this uh, VR. Yeah, we could call it that, yeah. <laughs> because it's... we. Get, and that's a good thing right now. We're not actually looking for more collaborators. We've talked about it mm -hmm. because then there'll suddenly be all kind of deadlines and all that kind of stuff. And you right, manage people. yeah. And right now we don't need that. No. Now we just need to explore what can this do and how will the doctors actually work with it. So it's still early days about that. And and we have we have to be flexible about our time. Mm -hmm. So we can. It would not be fair to put in another collaborator mm -hmm. that expects some certain deadlines from us. Right? No, and it's also because it's a project that we really just enjoy. We just enjoy working on it together. And yes. I think getting a lot of. Um, people connected to it necessarily wouldn't be, you know, no, racing that. Not right now. No, no, not at this point. I think it would perhaps just add an overhead of confusion and who's doing <laughs> what and management. And yeah. as you said, right, yeah. that's not really what we're looking for. No. And everyone has a person in his or her family that has been wrongly diagnosed. Everyone can relate to this. There's no one who hasn't been having an experience with, mm. ah, okay, it took too long, or A, they missed this or that sign. And, and, and that's also one of the really strong points in this, that everyone understands this project immediately. Yeah, it's Why a good it's chance needed. to train a lot more, because we talked about it. You read the book, and you can, of course, read that as many times as you want. And then we are going as an intern. There's a lot of doctors trying to learn from this one doctor, right? Yeah. And maybe it's one at a time, and then there's these three people, and they're, of course, sick. But then that's it. You can't train more today because there's no more sick people coming in, right? Yeah, but exactly. with a simulation like this, if you want, you can train and train and train and train and train. Uh, and no one's gonna die. <laughs> and no one's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can actually restart it. No one will it. suffer. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You can because actually restart it. That's the yeah. problem, I guess, that if you're not getting it right when you're seeing that disease that only four people in Denmark are getting each yeah. year, then yeah. Yeah, you yeah. she will die. Yeah. Maybe you can talk about that we want to make it data-driven. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's because I have a data background, so of course we're sitting here, ah, can we get some data? That's right. <laughs> um, and, and, and one can say right now we have just chosen a, a case of sepsis because that was something that Henna could relate to and that was something where he had experience. Mm. In, in, but what, what, what the future perhaps would be holding was that we could use data to actually identify where we are most often seeing a wrong diagnosis and then based on that be choosing which cases we should be including in the experience mm -hmm. so that you are not just taking all diseases because that's not a possibility. Then you're all of a sudden having 4,000 different scenarios that you can go through, right? There has to be some kind of 
idea or logic behind the cases that we are choosing. Yes. And then, I mean, using data, using a, like quantitative measures, is perhaps that's perhaps not enough. We need to get people from Skype to evaluate that, okay, this specific disease, perhaps we're only seeing 10 cases of this every year, but it's still really relevant for the students to go through. So, so that's like qualitative and quantitative measures to figure out what's making sense to include. Yeah. So that's like that's the future. That's the aspiration. That's what we to, hope to do. Yeah. yeah, that could be super cool. Yeah. yeah, we have a collaboration with Stevo here in Aarhus, and we hope to get like some kind of access to some of their data uh, because they work a lot with healthcare industry in the United States as well and and other places. And so they have access to a lot of data, and we need to figure out how can we use that to figure out like what is the whole picture of what gets mis misdiagnosed and what doesn't. Yeah. It sounds like a plan, and it also sounds like a lot of work. It yes, is, so, it so is. that's why we take it as we go. And yes. We don't promise anything because it might take a long time, it might take a short time. So we build something, we get it tested, we build something new, get it tested. And yeah, and right now it's also making sense just with the qualitative way of attacking this, you could say, like where we're going out and asking the doctors, where are you seeing most often that problems occur and so on, and that's, that's good enough, right? But if we want to have a full-scale big system, right? Then there needs to be some kind of a data, data-driven approach to how it should be designed. So we've been presenting um, the simulation in a lot of different places. And um, we presented it here in Aarhus, which was kind of a fair made by the people who granted us some money. They also granted some money to different projects. And so being part of that, we got to kind of show it off for the first time. And after that, we went to Amsterdam to show it off. And um, that was more of an international uh, fair that we were invited to in together with one of our partners, uh, Stevo, who has provided us with some office space. And, and they also take us to some conferences. And this was one of them. Um, so there was people from the US and from all over Europe uh, seeing the, the simulation and trying it out. And then we have presented it in uh, Estonia as well. And... Um, Later this month, we'll present it at a hospital here in Aarhus for some doctors. And next month, we will go to Lithuania to present it at another fair. Um, so it's kind of all over Europe for now, and we'll see if we get outside the border soon. <laughs> I think we have been using around, I would say, $6,000. And that's all in with everything to get to this part. Um, so to test this idea out and see if it's worth something, I think that's a pretty cheap way to, to get to that point. Um, and of course, we've put in some hours <laughs> to make it happen. And then if you uh, could... I'm trying to look at your questions to yeah. see if you can prepare. <laughs> <laughs> that's cheating. No. <laughs> so where this will take us, we have no idea. And where this will go, it's so hard to say, but... I think what we just experienced is that people, they come up with ideas on our behalf when we show it to them. Oh, it would be cool if we could do it like this. So, oh, can we try that thing out? And we think, yeah, sure, let's try it out. And sometimes we think, ah, we have so much other stuff to try out in this specific simulation right now. And so we obviously think that VR is a, is a cool technology and we love working with it. And it, it feels really good to also do something in a field where we feel like that this can really make a difference.